Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to this Eucharist on the seventh Sunday after Easter, the Sunday after the Feast of the Ascension. Uh, if you're regulars, of course you're welcome, and a special welcome to people who may be joining us for the first time. Uh, there are many, many members of All Saints across the world. Uh, I get uh, inquiries from descendants of Newton Heath folk all the time. Uh, you may just have chanced upon us by accident. You're very, very welcome. These are kind of in-between times, as I will explain in my homily a little bit later. We are at that time between the Ascension and Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit and, if you like, the official birthday of the Church. And if you think about it in all sorts of ways on our planet at the moment, we are in between times. So we prepare to worship God in spirit and in truth, to hear God's holy word and to open our hearts and minds to the action of the Holy Spirit as we say our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem, from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went into the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, 
Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All are mine and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many times you will have heard me say you might just as well read the little message I have in the pew sheet, which is a reflection on particularly the Gospel reading for the Sunday. Uh, you may want to do that, or you may want to just hear me out through this brief homily. As I said, we are in between times, and the two readings that we have heard today exemplify that. A friend of mine uh, once commented that the disciples must have felt some sense of bereavement at the apparent loss of Jesus again at the Ascension. Uh, the euphoria of the 40 days of the resurrection before the Ascension is dissipated. Uh, we don't know precisely their mood when they went back to uh, their friends in Jerusalem, but I expect a little bit of disappointment and bewilderment was there. And then we look at the reading from John, which is a great sort of priestly prayer. And you put those two things together, and we await the coming of the Holy Spirit next week at Pentecost. Of course, the Holy Spirit's here. We mark it in space and time next week. Jesus has already given a few clues to the disciples about what is shortly to happen. Uh, we've had that reading from John 14, in my Father's house are many dwelling places, that he's going before them to prepare a place for them. This, of course, is the, the Good Shepherd we heard about a few chapters before. And now Jesus, as it were, is preparing to hand things over to human beings. 
people that are not even as fully human as Jesus is human, let alone fully divine. The mission becomes the mission of people like you and me. The mission of Jesus Christ becomes the work of the church, which was founded upon fallible Pete, St. Peter, the guy that kind of got it wrong, the kind of guy that denied Christ three times. Jesus relies on the likes of you and me. Well, in between times, perhaps, in those readings we heard from the scripture, certainly in between times now, uh, a time of uncertainty. When will this all end? Well, the kind of reciprocal of that going back to scripture was, of course, well, when will all this begin? When will the second coming come? When will the heavens open and God descend in all his glory to bring about God's kingdom on earth in its fullness, to eradicate these pesky Romans, to clean up the corrupt religious establishment in Jerusalem? Well, of course, not only did it not happen uh, in the lifetime of the apostles and disciples, such that a few of them felt they needed to write things down, uh, it's as much not here now as it was then, but we believe it's here in part, but not in its fullness. So there is this sort of theological tension we hold all the time between the kingdom of God being present and here, but yet to be fully realised. And add to that, if you like, the sort of tension that we're living under now of conflicting messages from even the scientists and certainly government about when schools may be reopening, when, for goodness sake, churches may be reopening. Lots of apparently contradictory sort of signs and indications that are sort of leaking out all the time, just adding to this sense of angst. Well, not that I want to make this completely a kind of All Saints Newton Heath YouTube channel world, but some of you may have picked up on a few of the videos where I've uh, describe the need to look after ourselves and to put ourselves at the centre of our lives in a way that's not uh, self selfish in a negative way, that's egocentric, but a way that actually looks after ourselves in such a way that we can then look after other people. So reflect on the day, those of you who've seen the little pieces to camera all know, reflect on the day, where was God, where did you miss God, how could I have done things better, plan carefully and prayerfully for the next day because we are in these in-between times these times are quite unprecedented but as we heard in the collect for this sunday of the year and as we heard last sunday jesus has promised that we will not be left comfortless the holy ghost the paraclete the person that's called to be alongside us the holy ghost the Comforter will be there to strengthen us. The Holy Ghost, the Advocate, will be there to help us to speak for ourselves in an authentic way. So take courage from the readings today. Take courage that Jesus trusts human beings to do Jesus' work here on earth. And we look forward next week to the birthday of that church as we come together to celebrate Pentecost. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are firm, are firm in faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, he became incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father, through the Son, who is present with us to eternity. Father, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit, whose arrival on the disciples in the upper room we celebrate next week. We pray your guidance in our discernment of Scripture, particularly in St John's Gospel, with all its complexity, that we may see that the Word is made flesh and dwells among us, as the Word has dwelt with us from the beginning of time. And as in John, Jesus prepares to hand over his mission to human beings, we pray today for all the members of the Anglican Communion around the world. We pray for our sister denominations. And within the Anglican Communion we pray for all primates and bishops, members of the Anglican Consultative Council, its Secretary General, the staff at the Anglican Communion Office in London, and their United Nations offices in Geneva and New York. And within the Porvoo Communion, we pray for the Church of England's Diocese of Exeter, and in the Church of Norway, for the Diocese of Nord Hebergaland, and for their Bishop Olaf Ugyad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government, and we pray for transparency in its operation. We pray for true leadership. We pray for all those whose responsibility it is to govern at this time of uncertainty. And we pray for all those at the front line of this crisis, all those involved in health care, in hospitals, in care homes, visiting medical professionals, nurses, doctors, paramedics. And we pray for all those who are anxious at all the uncertainty, all the contradictory messages, those who are worried and fret. We hold all these things before you, and in your mercy we ask you to hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Within our community, we pray for our schools, nominally on the wits and break, although for many staff it is business as usual. And we pray for our schools, All Saints, Wilfrid's, Briscoe Lane Academy, Christ the King, Co-op Academy, Broadhurst, Oldham Bluecoat. Trinity High School, Northridge High School, and St Ambrose College. And we pray for the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit in the teaching and learning taking place in people's homes. Strength for perseverance. And grace to accept that things are as they are. Lord, in your mercy. Within the parish, we pray for our residential and care homes. For all care workers, for factories, shops, and supermarkets, many of whom have either had to lay off or furlough staff. We pray for security services, and we pray for firms of undertakers at this challenging time. 
Lord, in your mercy. And so we pray for all those who are especially ill in body, mind, or spirit. I think of those recently in receipt of uncomfortable news. We pray for all those who are confused whether to report concerns or to seek treatment because of an additional burden on our health service. We pray those adhere to guidance that our concerns are never too trivial to be reported, that God wishes us to be well, God wishes us to be whole. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks to God for the lives of those we love but don't see anymore for all that was good in their lives and for all the memories we treasure today. Among them we name Ronnie Brooks Sr. whose funeral took place last week and Leslie Turner whose funeral is to take place on Tuesday. And from our Book of Remembrance we name Beatrice Southworth, Ethel Finney, Eric Walker, Maud Drain, Robert Jackson, John Briggs and Susan Siddle. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, that light perpetual shine upon them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Hallelujah. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great High Priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving spirit of Pentecost. Therefore all creation yearns with eager longing, as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this wine, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Wilfrid, St. Anne, St. Cuthbert, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O mighty Father, forever and ever. as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us In spiritual communion, draw near with faith to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out of the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Here we are, traditionally the time for the notices. Um, happy birthday to those of you that had birthdays last week. Those of you that have got birthdays coming up. Uh, it is the birthday of the church on Sundays, so do be sure to join us here on Sunday. Um, thank you, those of you who have commented on a broadcast this week, and particularly last Sundays, which was all done in one piece, mercifully. I did that by reducing the resolution, the video quality, which I hope doesn't affect things too much. It has, however, slightly affected the, the shape of the, of the picture. And I think last week you might not have got in the Paschal Candle. Uh, and certainly it's uh, affected a few things that I've done uh, from home. But I hope this is acceptable. No music this week. Um, not because I couldn't be bothered. Uh, because um, somehow the um, copyright police picked up that we'd had some music played. Now whether this is because there's the equivalent of kind of Shazam playing, which means that the computers back at YouTube HQ recognise the tracks that are played, or whether it's because of some descriptions that I printed. I was 95% sure that our copyright licences covered that. So um, nothing adverse has happened, but this was flagged up. But I don't want it uh, to happen again for us to get a sort of bad reputation. So I'm going to do a little bit more research on the playing of music live, as it were, to camera. Uh, things are obviously completely different if you're editing tracks uh, over an existing video, which is slightly beyond me at the moment. But I hope to crack that one day for the sake of better quality of communication via our YouTube channel. I don't know about you, but uh, the weather this back holiday weekend has really made me fed up. Um, we were told it was going to be slightly breezy, but not the huge gusts of wind we've had. In fact, so big on Friday afternoon, about four o'clock, that Laburnum at the northwest end of the church completely blew over. Um, a, to all outside appearances, uh, a really healthy tree, but actually one that was actually rotten to the core. Uh, I wouldn't want you to take that as a metaphor for uh, the political establishment, but I'm sure you can think of many uh, instances to which that metaphor might apply. Who knew? Anyway, Saturday afternoon, uh, fortunately, um, a the chap that looks after the church grounds came with a chainsaw and it's all been logged up. We've just got to get rid of the smaller branches, which are, of course, in leaf and in bloom. But fortunately, uh, nobody, nothing, nothing was damaged in the descent of this tree uh, in what was clearly a great gust of wind. My best wishes to you all uh, for this bank holiday weekend, or what remains of it. Uh, it is half term, two weeks actually for All Saints School. Uh, All Saints School traditionally would take two weeks at WIT, uh, one week for St Wilfrid's and I dare say other schools as well. Uh, but I guess it's a kind of academic difference anyway uh, for many, many people. The, the business of uh, keeping young people entertained and educated will continue. Um, but just uh, believe uh, the words that you hear uh, when we've not been left comfortless. Uh, Jesus has gone before us to prepare a place. That the Holy Spirit is our comforter and guide. Look after yourselves. Just take some time, morning and night, just to be a little bit sort of um, self-centred in a positive way, uh, to boot up in the morning, to defrag at night. And I'm sure that all shall be well. Uh, thank you, those who also have been inquiring after my well-being. Uh, I was really very, rather very touched by, by some of them. Uh, it's nice to know that one's being thought of because yes even um, those of us that live alone are finding this period of isolation and quarantine very very challenging so have a good week and with every blessing i trust i'll see you here literally here uh, at uh, the same time or whatever time you choose to view uh, for the feast of pentecost 
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>